It's time for health tips. Now here's your host, Dr. Alma Jenkins. Good evening. I'm Dr. Alma Jenkins and this is Health Tips. Thank you so much for watching. Well, it's another Saturday evening and I'm just so thankful that you've invited a friend over, have you, to watch the show. This is Health Tips. And before we get into any more of the show, let me just remind you that we would love to come to your organization and speak on a topic of health. It doesn't have to be a gastroenterology topic. As you know, I am a gastroenterologist, uh, but we can talk on any topic that you desire. Uh, and if we need to have a specialist come, another specialist come with us, we'll do our best to, to arrange that as well. So we want you to have access to this information. It's really very important. The second thing is that I wanted to invite you to something. Now, we've done a lot of things on the show. You know, we've done different meats. We've done some veggies. We've done smoothies. Um, we don't do much baking. I'm not really a baker, but hopefully we can tackle that at some point in the show. But what I thought would be interesting is if we embarked on a meatless journey. Now, before you get too excited, let me just tell you, I'm not advocating that you give up all your meat. No, not at all. But it may be something interesting for you to try. Some people try a meatless Monday or a meatless day of the week that they go without any meat. Now, let's just uh, let's be honest. You know, the, the vegetarian diet is very healthy in general. Uh, most people, when they eat meat, um, some people, let me say this, some people when they eat meat, eat too much meat or they eat fatty meat. You know, some people have bacon every morning for breakfast and bacon and sausage. You know, that's not healthy. So let me introduce you to some meatless um, foods and see if you like it. Uh, but before we get to that, I'm going to introduce you to something to help one of the real problems that I see in my practice. In fact, I probably see this problem, you know, with every office, every uh, day that I have an office visit time, there'll be at least one person to come in with this problem. And that problem is constipation. I get more constipation probably than almost anything else. Uh, many people are constipated. Now, let me just tell you that constipation can be a serious problem or it could be one of those things that we just have to deal with. Now, when it's a serious problem, it can be a manifestation of something growing in the colon that keeps the food, the, 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 the stool from coming out. Then that's a real issue. Uh, many times there is a red flag to tell us that. Number one, if the person is over 50 years of age. Number two, if there's also some blood in the stool. Number three, if there's significant weight loss with this constipation. These are all things that make constipation become almost an alarm signal. So we work that up all together differently. But I have to tell you that most of the time, constipation is not that. It may be a product of diet. Um, it could be a problem dealing with not drinking enough water. And I stress water drinking because many people just don't drink enough of it. One of the rules I tell patients is, uh, actually I've told my family this, is when you wake up in the morning, the first thing after you do whatever you do in the morning when you first get up, make this one of the first things you do, drink a glass of water. Do that first, drink a glass of water. Most people don't drink enough water. And that can be for any number of reasons. Sometimes older people don't drink a lot of water because they, they're afraid they're going to keep going to the bathroom. Uh, younger people don't drink it because they don't get the habit of drinking it. So I'm going to first tell you that first thing in the morning, unless there's a reason, drink a glass of water, an eight ounce glass of water. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to show you a natural remedy for constipation, not all constipation, because it depends on what it's due to. 
But for that run of the mill constipation, uh, I'm going to give you what really works. I do this almost every day. Uh, when I don't do it, it's because I didn't think about it or forgot it or something. But my intention is every day to do what I'm about to show you. Uh, this is a natural. Not everything natural is healthy, but this is a healthy natural. So if this doesn't help you, it's not going to hurt you. And it doesn't have a contraindication that I can think of offhand, like, you know, if you have heart disease or kidney problems or that. You can still do this unless you have a problem with yogurt. Now, if you have a problem with yogurt, then don't, don't do it, whatever that problem might be. But I'm going to introduce you to two things that I think are going to help you with your constipation, provided that you've already, if you needed to see a doctor, you've already done that. He's already ruled out other things, he or she, and now it's just a matter of treating the constipation. It's not, there's no cancer suspected, uh, there's no other kinds of problems that may not respond to this suspected, okay? So this may just be part of irritable bowel, say for instance, or a problem with your diet, for instance. So apart from drinking more water, here's another solution that will be surprisingly simple but you have to do it, and you have to do it every day. Now, if you do this every day, in about two weeks, I think you should start to see that you're being regular all the time. And let me suggest that you do it at about the same time every day. So if you do this every morning or do it every night, but your body is, your body functions best on a cycle, on a rhythm. You know, it's an interesting thing. Everything is a rhythm. If you study biology or physics, you're going to find out that even atoms have a rhythm. They have a spin. They have a, a way that they function. Everything is so ordered. God is such a, an organized um, spirit uh, that, you know, it has to inspire you to get some order into your life. Uh, and that's the one thing I've really learned from studying biology and physics and all of that. The order is incredible that brought us to this point. So I, I digress. Let me get back to this. So let's look at what it's going to take for getting this together. So I'm going to open. I have Dana and yogurt right now, but I really like Shabani. I just happen to have uh, Dana. Um, it doesn't matter. You can do either one. Some people, you might want to do um, the other popular one that I can't think of right now, but you may want to do that. Now, this one has a fruit in the bottom. You don't have to get that. Um, for those of you who want to do exactly what I've tried, I do Shobani Key Lime flavor. Key Lime Shobani, C-H-O-B-A-N-I, because I find that I just like the taste of the Key Lime, and it, it, it seems to blend well with what else I'm going to show you. So here's the yogurt here. Now, I'm going to show you a brand name, but you don't have to get this. It's called Mila. Mila is the brand name, but what is in here are chia seeds. Okay, I want you to remember this. This is how you spell it. C-H-I-A. Chia. Chia seed. You may be familiar with this on the commercials. They would have a piece of pottery. They plant a chia seed, and it would grow in the shape of the pottery. You know, and they, it was a commercial about chia, chia. But chia seeds are actually very healthy for you. They have a lot of health benefits. And it's kind of like flaxseed seeds. Um, they're healthy as well. But chia seeds are very healthy for you. And this particular container, I'm going to open it now. It's the first time it's being opened. Okay. And it has a scooper in it. If you want to order from this, you can. It's the Mila Company. But you don't have to. You can go to Walmart and buy chia seeds. Let me just show them to you. Look at there. They're very fine. It's almost like pepper seeds. It looks kind of like ground pepper almost. Okay? But I'm going to get a scoop of this chia. And I'm going to pour it into this container of yogurt. Now, you got to be careful when you do it because, you know, it leaks all out the side. 
I'm going to put this to the side here. Because I don't want it to waste. You know, and what I do is I just twirl my spoon to try to mix it. Because as it's mixing, it swells. The seed is very absorptive. And it can be a little messy at first, you know. But just twirl it around in there. And if you get Chobani, there's more room. It's packaged differently. It's a wider mouth container. And it's not this meticulous when you stir it. So that's the other reason I like using Chobani. These Danon comes in these little containers. And you got to be real careful if you put something else in it. But notice I'm, I'm actually doing pretty well here. And you got to stir it really well because, you know, you got in this particular one, you've got fruit in the bottom. But when you buy Chobani, if it doesn't have fruit in it, that's fine. I'd rather have the kind that doesn't. And sometimes I'll put blueberries in it and nuts. And that's pretty much breakfast. Now, if you get used to eating a breakfast like that, you won't always have to have bacon, eggs, and grits, and all that stuff, you know, which is good. I had it this morning. I didn't have bacon. I had uh, mushrooms, because I don't eat uh, pork bacon. But, um, okay, so I've got that mixed up. Now, that chia seeds will swell, you know, and if you mix it up in water, it'll absorb the water and become sort of thick. So it's good to just eat this right away when you mix it. Mm-hmm. It's really good. It does not change the taste of the yogurt. You don't really taste the chia seed. It doesn't have a taste. You just feel the texture of it, and you chew on it, and it, it just blends well. It takes on the flavor of whatever you put it in practically, because it absorbs it. So you really don't taste the chia seed. So there's no, you know, ugh, you know, taste of the chia seed or oily taste or something like that. But if you eat this whole thing, you have fiber. And at the end of about two weeks, if you do it religiously, you're going to every morning, or it might be for you every night, but you're going to find that you get up, you go to the bathroom, you have a nice big soft bowel movement no effort it really works now i can tell you that from experience i'm not just telling you something i read about i'm telling you something i have done and i know that it works now everybody is different to some degree so for some people who have other issues this may not work but i can tell you it's worth trying the other thing it does is helps to repopulate your gut do you know that your gut is the biggest immune system that you have? All the, you know, your immunity comes largely from what's going on in your gut. So if you can baby your gut, if you can put the right things in your intestines, then you've done a lot to deal with your immune system. So it is important what you eat. So when you go out to dinner and you go to a uh, buffet, Think about what you're putting in there, because that's what you've got to work with. Now, this is delicious, and if you eat it, let's say after you drink your water, you do this, it's going to help limit what you have to have for breakfast, because it kind of is filling. It won't fill you up to where you don't want breakfast, but it will lessen your need to eat more and more and more. So you will not feel the need to just pig out, you know. And if you can control that first meal, you've done a good thing. That's why I say you can doll it up by putting berries, fresh blueberries in there. You can put nuts in there with it. And really, if you have yogurt, fresh blueberries, and some nuts in there, and you eat it not piggishly, but just slowly, that's breakfast. Maybe a cup of coffee with that or a cup of tea or whatever you drink with it. That can be your breakfast. You can even have a piece of toast with it if you want. But that's the kind of thing that I want you to kind of get used to instead of a big, big breakfast, you know, uh, every time. And, and plus, when you eat too big a breakfast, you can't function. You know, it makes you sleepy because you got to digest all of that. So let me encourage you to do that. I want you to try this. Try it and let me know.
if it helped you move your bowels. Now, I want you to do this in addition to drinking more water. I want you to do two things. Try the yogurt and chia seeds. You can get those at Walmart, by the way. You can get chia seeds at Walmart. You can get them at the health food store here in Goldsboro, wherever you are. Um, I want to hear from you. I want to know if it works for you. I'm just curious to know how many people will find it as beneficial as I have found it to be. Okay, so we've dealt with that. I'm going to put this aside now. And I'm going to tell you what I want us to do next time because I want you to get these ingredients. Now, some people say, you know, that's not fair because you didn't try it. And that's true. Most of the time, the stuff that I tell you, I usually like to have tried it myself and I know, and know that it's good. But in this case, we're going to try a recipe together. And the reason I'm willing to do that is because I've looked at the ingredients in this recipe and I know that these are the things that I like anyway. Now, I may tweak this so that, you know, it becomes our own, but I'm going to give credit for this to Sally's Baking Addiction. That's Sally's, L-A-S-A-L-L-Y, apostrophe S, Baking Addiction, and that's on the internet. So you can look this up if you want. And it's under the best black bean burgers I've ever had. Now, I fell in love with black bean burgers when I was um, working in Laurenburg, North Carolina. How many of you know where Laurenburg is? Anyway, I worked down there and at the hospital, Scotland Memorial, in fact. That cafeteria had the best black bean burgers I have ever eaten in my entire life. They were delicious and I would always go over there when I knew they had black bean burgers because they tasted like burgers. You know, I was like, wow, what is this? What? And I never really got their recipe. I'm still going to try to get it and see if it in any way, if it coincides with this, it has to, because the things I'm tasting in it sound like or taste like what might be in these. But I'm going to write these ingredients here. And I want you to jot these down because we're going to make the black bean burger. Now, when we're going to make it, I hope to make it possibly the next show or the one after that because, you know, we've had to tape some of our shows. So I don't want to promise you something and not do it. But if you get these into your home, you'll have it. And we can, because uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, um, you can, the, 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 the meat substitute, you can freeze. The other things are dry goods that, that should last most of the other things. So let me, let me give you the ingredients for the black bean burgers. You're going to need two cans of black beans. That's to start with. You're going to need a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. How much of that you need? One tablespoon. Are you jotting this down? You're going to need three-fourths cup of chopped bell pepper. Okay. You're going to need one cup of finely chopped yellow onion. We're giving out of time, so we're going to have to go fast. Okay. Now I'm going to erase that so I can put the rest of the ingredients. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Because I'm, I'm not even quite halfway through the ingredients yet. When we get down to a few minutes, I may just have to tell you and you write it down. Time goes fast when you're having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, and then you're going to need three garlic cloves. You're going to mince them. That comes to about a tablespoon of garlic cloves. You know, I went to um, Walmart and bought this big thing of garlic cloves. Of course, it took a while to use all that, and some, and some of the cloves are now sprouting. <laughs> so anyway, so three garlic cloves. And you're going to mince them. That comes to about a tablespoon. One and a half teaspoons of cumin. Okay. 
and then a teaspoon of chili powder. I know you said, wow, look at it. But some of you have a lot of this already in your pantry. A half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay. And then a fourth of a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Smoked paprika. Okay. A fourth of a teaspoon. Okay, I'm going to erase that. You got that? Did you jot that down? Okay. <laughs> All right, a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Okay. Um, you can use oat flour, but most of us have breadcrumbs. A half a teaspoon of feta cheese. Okay, we're almost done. Two large eggs. Okay. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm just going to put W, sauce. Okay. You got that? All right. Go ahead, jot it down real quickly. I'm getting ready to erase it. All righty, we're almost done here now. We're going to be making something real nice. Two tablespoons of ketchup, mayonnaise, or barbecue sauce. Ketchup, mayo, or barbecue sauce. Okay. And finally, a pinch of salt and pepper. Okay. Now, what in the world are we making? Guess what we're making? The best black bean burger you've ever eaten. Okay? Now we're going to tell you how to make that when we get, when we meet again at some point. Hopefully next time, but very soon. So I want you, if you can, okay, most of these things will, will, will keep. Because a lot of it, the chili powder, garlic powder, paprika, breadcrumbs, Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, salt, pepper. The, the bell pepper and yellow onion, they usually will keep. Now you can, you can chop those up and you can freeze them. Um, onions freeze funny, but you can still do that. Um, olive oil, and of course you can use a can of black beans. The only thing that is kind of immediate, it really, are the eggs. And the eggs usually last a while if you buy them you know, and go by the use by date uh, on the package. So really, most of this stuff you can, uh, you can do and keep uh, and just have in your pantry for when we make our black bean burger. Now this will come in handy in the spring and summer when you're trying to have a cookout, but you're trying to be vegetarian, um, and so you don't want to have a real burger, and you don't want to do soy. Let me just tell you that part of what I'm trying to do now is get away from soy if I can. Now, there's nothing wrong with soy, but some people probably shouldn't do as much soy as others. I know people who have problems with fibroids. Now, I have heard, and it makes sense, that if you have that problem, then sometimes the, there's some concern about the estrogen that's in the plant that it might be adverse to those fibroids because you know estrogen makes fibroids grow. So um, getting away from, from soy is really good for some patients, some people. Uh, and I'm one of those people that's trying to get away from soy because I used to buy all the fake meat, you know, I'd eat all that fake stuff and it was good. But because of some other issues that I uh, have encountered, um, fibroids is one of my issues. I've decided to try to go soyless. So the recipes vegetarian that I'm going to give you are going to be soyless recipes, okay? And if you're going to go soyless, it means you usually have to make it yourself. Now there are some companies that are soyless, that make soyless things, and I'll try to, I'll try to call attention to those companies so that 
you can uh, try their products and see. But look at this, you're making this from scratch. So you're gonna feel good when you make this burger and it tastes good, we're gonna do the happy dance. <laughs> so I want you to get this. Now I'm excited about it. We only have about two minutes left. So you know what we need to do in those two minutes, right? We need to do our exercise in these last two minutes that we have. In fact, I meant to exercise more, but it took all this time for us. And guess what else we're gonna do? Not this time and not next time, but I have a recipe for a meatless meatloaf. Now I've been trying to get a good meatloaf forever. I'm gonna try that recipe before I give that to you because meatloaf is something that, you know, if you like meatloaf, you like the taste of the meatloaf. I don't want to make a meatloaf that tastes nasty, okay? Um, the, the black bean burger I'm willing to take a chance on because it has the ingredients in it that I think I was tasting in the one at Laurenburg. But the meatloaf, I'm gonna try that first and then if, it, if it's really that good, I'll give you that recipe, okay? And that recipe, by the way, is from Chef Charity. I may tweak it though. Chef Charity has put out a, a meatless meatloaf that looks like it ought to be good. Okay, let's see, can we get just a little bit in while we, and we're gonna go off with the exercise going. One, two, ready, and one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, and 10. 11 and 12, let's do 20, 13 and 14, 15. Come on, smile while you're doing it. 16, 17, 18, 19 and 22. Now outward, one and two, three and four. Ladies and gentlemen, five. I'm so happy that you came. Thank you for tuning in. This is Dr. Jenkins. Good night.